This video is sponsored by PCBWay. So I think this project has a really great indication of like, if you don't agree with a product that somebody has brought to the market and uh, you've bought it already, and then figured out like, okay, I can't really use this, that you, so it's like totally within your capacity to kind of change it and make it your own and actually make it usable for yourself. If you're willing to invest the time, of course. All right, so I've recently switched to DaVinci Resolve and the way I've been doing this is by uh, switching to the DaVinci Resolve speed editor. If you don't know what this is, it doesn't really matter for the video. The way I edit right now is with the Stream Deck next to it, like so. The only issue with this pad is that none of the buttons are customizable. And that's been working out okay, but there's so many useful features on this side of the device that I can't remap to the Stream Deck. The way that I expect you to edit with it is, well, kind of like this with two hands here. And my thumb is resting on these three buttons, so it would be nice if we had like a Stream Deck Mini right over here. And the way I've been able to switch over to DaVinci so fast is by utilizing ChatGPT to ask it questions on certain things, right? Yeah, eventually I also had this idea of like making it a top panel. I've been using the keyboard quite a lot, and this is just really awkward. So these are the buttons I want to keep. Yeah, I don't really wish to switch my edit style. And so what I did in the beginning phases was really go through quite a lot of iterations trying to make this thing work in its current configuration. You know, putting the stream deck next to it and editing kind of like that with the scroll wheel in my hand. But there's like a lot of features on the other side of the device, which are feature locked behind it. You can't remap those to a macro pad, for example. And I still wanted to keep those. But I will say the thing was very nicely constructed. It was really easy to take apart. You just like whip up the little rubber pads. There's a few screws under there. So uh, like four screws on each end, kind of what you would expect. No funky stuff with like a, a hidden screw anywhere or that kind of stuff. The only problem we really ran into is that most of the switches are going through a metallic plate and then soldered onto the PCB. Uh, one benefit we did run into is that the rotary encoder is separate from the rest of the device. So we could move that entire section to someplace else. And then I also considered like just flipping the entire board over, having a bunch of macro pads at the top over here and hiding the rest. So that, you know, it's, it's at least a little smaller, so it's still portable. And I think my process is really like very close to reverse engineering. So what I do is I take a picture of the original case where all the mounting holes are placed, and then I measure one piece of it. In this case, it was 40 millimeters. And then I draw that out in the CAD program. And the rest of the, you know, things I can draw out based on the picture. And then of course, double checking it later on to see if everything matches and that kind of stuff. I really started researching, okay, which macro pads will work best for this device. But the reason I kept using the Stream Deck is mainly because I think it, it will one day have an integration for the iPad and it is very stable. It rarely crashes for me. So the Stream Deck Mini has arrived. And these things are really surprisingly easy to take apart. You just put a screwdriver under it, snap the lid upwards, and then it just comes apart. That was shockingly easy. It appears that they have one main LCD under all of the buttons and then masking out the, the buttons. It's like a inefficient design, but really efficient in the same regard because making like little LCDs would be very difficult, I think. So once we had everything out of the casing, we could really start modeling how this thing would look. And I designed it around a protective plate with a USB hub in place. That would allow us to connect all the hardware to a single USB-C cable, so to say. In terms of the first design, I printed everything really thin and really tested it out for a couple of days, see if I got any cramps in my hand. Yeah, I wanted this thing to feel ergonomic, but not necessarily look ergonomic. Like from the start already, I knew that I wanted to make it so that it's flush mount with a desk setup, because it will be quite thick. We have a lot of USB cables printing in this thing, also to allow the Stream Decks to work. And so by hiding it inside of a desk setup, it's not that bad. And so after changing up the design a little bit so it can be implemented into a desk setup, I sent it off to PCBWay. On the last video, I got some questions like, what did you print this in and how does that uh, work exactly? So you can just upload the files. I printed it in resin, in UTR black, and that's been pretty amazing for larger projects like this. If you have something small, like uh, the 3D printed sunglass video, 
we did that in aluminium and stainless steel, which was also really awesome. Those are like materials you can't really do on your own printer at home. But they also offer a lot of other services like CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, and of course also PCB production and assembly. So definitely check them out. I left a link down below and also a link to the project page where you can download the STL for this project in particular. If you want to print this yourself and try it yourself, then you can definitely do that. So if the switches weren't soldered to the PCB through this metallic plate, then I would have bought myself a, an extension ribbon cable and moved this entire section to someplace else. So what we're installing right now is basically a kind of protection plate for the rear of this thing. I'm not sure if it needs it, like I don't think that any of this stuff is conductive or anything. Right, so to convert the cable into like a detachable cable, got this, you know, female to female USB-C connector. And the only issue with these things is that there's like one possible configuration, otherwise nothing happens. So basically I have this little like adapter thing, which we'll have to plug in like this and then screw it to this thing over it. Now I've actually left this one so that you can actually swap it over or push it backwards. It has a little bit of room between there. And at the moment it's quite close to the top. The buttons still work there. But I've noticed during testing this thing for the past week that I prefer it a little bit more like this. I mean, it's like a couple millimeters difference, but yeah, it just, it just works a little better. So what we're left with is a really awesome matte black editing keyboard. The way I use this thing is I have my hand resting on the stream deck. So my three main fingers are like um, holding buttons, so to say. And my pointy finger is just scrolling through the timeline. My thumb is resting on the stream deck mini and can also reach to the source in or like the trim in and trim out buttons. I hope to get that muscle memory, just like the same as in gaming, so to say, where I immediately know where those keys are. But I do have some upgrades planned for this where maybe I'll order some metallic switches and replace the switches of those buttons so they're a little bit higher and then you can feel like which ones you're pressing, right? Because at the moment I don't have that muscle memory yet and it's really difficult to figure out like where is that button. So I'm uploading a separate video showcasing how I use it, what kind of macros I have on it. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, definitely consider subscribing. See you in the next one.